Here's this function. It looks kind of like this. Okay. You got this point, right? It's, you know, x is three right here. Okay. Somewhere along the x-axis, this is x is three right at this point. Okay. There's a tangent line to that function right there at three. And you find the equation of that tangent line. Y equals mx plus b of that of that tangent line. This you shouldn't have too much trouble finding. Oh, we have to find the equation for The equation oh, of this yeah. tangent line right here. Don't, don't tell yourself you don't know. Do stuff. I do don't some stuff. know what to do. Do anything. Figure it out. Do some calculus stuff. You got that function there. Pointing at this. Okay, let's say you were to just do some stuff, do some calculusy stuff. Uh, what's the what's the calculusy thing you could do in this situation? Um, find the slope. Yeah, definitely. That's the definition of the thing that we found in the easier, faster. the definition of what? <laughs> yes. And there, isn't there an equation that tells us the slope of the tangent line of a function? Yes. Okay. What's it called? Um, this is a derivative. The derivative is that thing, that function, which tells us the slope at any x value. So, <laughs> kudos to do an f of x plus h minus f of x over h, because that is exactly what it will find, the slope at that point. Also, it would find the derivative function, but we have a faster way uh, using all the rules that we learned. So f prime of x oh, I know. I know. is equal to 6x squared minus 24x plus 20. And then plus 20. Well, what is that thing? What does the derivative do? What does it tell you? Slope of a tangent line. Slope of a tangent line given what? We don't need to need a full point. We just need half a point, an x. Yeah, we need an x value. So at x equals 3, right, f of f prime of 3 is? 2. 2. Is it 2? It's 2. So now, do we have any information now about this equation of this line? We have m, right, the slope. And then you plug in 0. So I get zero for what? Or you get the slope of the tangent line. And if you plug in zero for that, then you could give you where it intersects y axis. Right, so it's equal to two. Just plug in three. Well, yeah. Or you can just find, like, plug three in the original function, find y, and plug it in. Okay, so we have several different options. Uh, let's all direct our attention up here. Okay. We need B, right? Uh, that's the only thing we're missing, because right now we have Y equals 2X plus, we don't know what B is, okay? So there's a couple different ways. Here's one way. This, this X and this Y represent a point where? <coughs> On which function? F. Well, this tangent line. This tangent line is not f prime, right? Oh, yeah. This tangent line just has a value of 2 because that's the value of the slope at 3. Okay? Um, so we need b. So this, what we need is a point on the line. Can we find a point on the line? About this point that's also on the function, right? That's where, it, that's the definition of what this line is. It's the tangent line. It touches the function at this point. So how do we find that point, this x, y? Um, we X is 3. X is 3 in here. Yeah. And figure out what Y is. Yeah. Did you find out what that was? 5. 5? 3, 5? Yeah. Okay. Okay. So this point, we can say F of 3 is 5 so that we know which function we put the 3 into and what 5 came out of. 
So 5 equals 2 times 3 plus b. So b equals negative 1. So y equals 3x minus 1. 2x. 2x minus 1. <coughs> Uh, I mentioned another option. Here's another option. Uh, do you remember the point slope form? Mm -hmm. I remember like. I remember the name of it. Yeah. <laughs> y minus y1 equals m times x minus x1. Yeah, I don't remember that. Okay, I've never seen that. Get real, real comfortable with this guy who's going to reference it today quite a few times. The point slope form. It's called a point slope form because we have a point and a slope of a line. Uh, solve, to plug them in and solve for y, we have the equation on the line. So we just found this point on the line, also on the function, but also on the line. Uh, so y minus 5 equals m, we found is 2, times x minus x1, which is 3. So y equals 2x minus 6 plus 5. I'm just solve it for y, so add 5 to both sides, distribute this 2, get 6. So 2x, 2x minus 1. y equals 2x minus 1. That is the equation of what? Equation of the line at x equals 3. OK. So that's something you should be able to do. We're going to talk about the equation of a tangent line, the general equation of a tangent line to a function. Uh, so first, what I want to, to ask you is, given the choice between this function and this function, if you needed to find the y value of one of those functions, which one would you rather use? Y. Y, not f, right? Because it's simpler. If I was just saying plug 3 into one of these equations, you would say choose y. Right? Much easier than all the cubes and the square and all that stuff. Now, at x equals 3, what would you say about these two functions, y and f? What's that? They coincide? They, they meet up? Yeah. They are at exactly the same point. So at x equals 3, we get 5 for both of them. Okay. Now, you don't have to find the exact values, but what about at 3.01? They won't be the same, but what can we say about them? They'll be, yeah, as we move towards, closer to 3, they're going to push 5. Uh, also, they're going to be close to each other. Right? They're not going to be off by all that much. Okay? Um, So here is the actual uh, graphing of these functions. Uh, so at this point right here, they're the same, 3 comma 5. And just to the right or just to the left, 3, just barely to the right or the left for a small delta x, right? for a small change in x, uh, our values of y are going to not be that different. They're going to be very close to each other. In fact, if I bring up. Uh, this one. No, not that one. This one. Uh, let's see. Can you zoom in. Zoom in. Okay, these are the two functions. Can you zoom it in on them. You think that the farther and farther we zoom in on it, the closer the two y values are. I mean, we're, we're kind of limited by the computer's ability to graph these two things. Uh, but look, here's 3. At 2.995, the y values are very close to each other. Right? What's our delta x there? What's delta? Change x. Change in x. What's the change in x from 3 to 2.995? Negative 0.005. Okay. Um, now we get to 2.99. Now they start to be a little bit different to each, than each other, but if we look at it, 
Uh, we're talking about a difference between maybe 4.98 and, well, just that much. Just a very small amount. They're very, very close to each other. Okay. So this is what we call linear approximations of a function. Okay. We use the tangent line at a point, at a specific point, and then we can look to the left and the right just a little bit, and they're so close to each other that, say, we wanted to write a computer program to um, calculate the, like how far off we're going to be of, of, uh, of a certain value. We might want to use that linear function rather than the actual function because the program, if it needs to make that calculation a bunch of times as it runs, it's, it executes whatever it does, uh, it could really bog it down if we had this complicated function. But if we take the derivative and find the tangent line at that point uh, and ask it to, because we're only within like 0 0.05 on either side, uh, to use that linear function rather than the actual function, it cuts down on its computing time and power and all that kind of stuff. Does that make sense? Okay. So when we're not getting very far off of the x value, uh, the linear approximation is, for some purposes, close enough. Okay. So linear approximations is what we're talking about here. Uh, So what when I say linear approximation, what do I mean? What lines? The lines shown by the fun two functions. The function and the line tangent to that function at a point. Okay. Alright. So we're gonna talk about differentials. Differentials and differential equations are pretty darned important, okay? They come up quite a bit and they're just kind of thrown here and there throughout the AP test as if it's kind of elementary and we all get it, okay? So we're gonna start with what a differential is and later we'll, start, we'll, we'll do more complicated like a chapter six is all about differential equations. Right now it's just a section on what a differential is, okay? Um, all right. And there's, there's going to be all this terminology like delta y and delta x, dy and dx, uh, linear approximations, approximating delta y with dy, all these kinds of things. And I want to just draw you a picture to help you like, get all this vernacular uh, cleared up. Right? It's not that difficult. Um, we'll fa first start with the uh, y and x axis. I'll draw you a function. I'm going to draw the line that's tangent to that function at some point. Um, we'll use this point right here. That'll be at uh, x. Or no, sorry, c. Let's use c just to stay consistent with the book. And this is f of c. The line tangent uh, is red. That The purpose of using this tangent line, the line that's tangent to this function at a point, is generally to stay really close to C and compare the y values of the two functions, the, the original function and the tangent line. Okay? If we get too far off, our y values are so different that those approximations are very bad. But when we're close to C, the approximations are pretty good. So now for all this terminology and stuff. <coughs> And I'm going to move way out here to where the approximations would be bad, but the, the spaces are big enough that we can see you know, what the labels and all that kind of stuff are referring to. So this is C, our specific value. X here is our variable value. It's how far away from C we're going to get. Right. Uh, okay, so we have two things. We have Y, the value of the, the tangent line at X. And we have, okay, we'll call it uh, f of uh, x. That's right. The bottom one's all right. Well, the distance that we move away from c, can you take a guess what that might be? The 
distance from C to X, what would you guess that's called? Delta X is X minus C is correct. Delta X would be X minus C, but we can just call it delta X. y value of c, the value of f of c, f of c, what do you think that distance might be called? Now we can approximate the actual y value of the function, or we can almost equivalently, I mean, it's going to give us the same information. We can find the, uh, we can compare the change, the actual change in y from here to there, or the approximate change in y using the tangent line. So we start here. Is this is the same starting point for our tangent line and for our original function. Okay. But to compare the two y values, we can change, we can compare the change in y to the change in y of the tangent line. So the change in y for the tangent line, well, we could call it delta y as well, but then we get very confusing because the other one is delta y. Okay? So we call it dy. Now, the change in x uh, for the tangent line and the change in x for the original function is the same, right? So whether we call it delta x or dx, those are going to be the same thing. Like the change in x for the tangent line and the original function, both are the same. So we call delta x, dx, it's the same thing. Okay. It's the dy and the delta y that we want to say, well, dy is going to be close to delta y. It's also going to be much easier to find. So sometimes we want to use dy to approximate the change in y of the actual function. Any questions so far? It's it's kind of it's conceptual. It's it's a bit abstract at the moment. To get to a point where we can apply it to like an example problem, we've got to pull some some stuff out of this diagram that'll apply to the problems that we. Their first, their initial point is always at with C. Because they both have a point at C, F of C. Right? Let's go back real quick to uh, to what we did to find the equation of the tangent line. Okay. What was the first thing we did? The first thing we did to find the equation of the tangent line? Solve the derivative. derivative. Plug in the x value, whatever that x value is. So for, for us, it was three, right? Specifically. Now, generally, it's applying it to the general problem here. Which of these would be three? C. C is our like initial value, our beginning uh, point. Okay. So the first thing we did is find the slope by finding the derivative and then plugging in C. Right. So 
we would express that as uh, the slope of the line is f prime of c. Okay. You find the derivative, you plug in that c value, 3 in the case of the one that we just did, uh, and there's the slope. Now, I'm going to choose the way that I did it with the slope intercept form rather than the other one. Because the other one involves kind of two steps. First, you solve for b, then you have to plug b back in, which is fine. It's just harder to show, like, generally, this is what you can do. Okay? So with the, with the solving for b, there's a step where you have to take b and plug it back into the original. For this one, we just take the slope intercept form and then, or the, the, the point slope form, and the rule is solve for y, which is solve for y, you're done. So we'll start with this. So first we'll write that out. We'll write down, uh, right, y minus y1 equals m, x m times x minus x1. So what part of this is f prime of c? Right there, we could even uh, we could uh, color code this stuff. We'll just make that in green. Also, this green. We can see that the m part of y minus y1 equals m times x minus x1 is f prime of c. We take the derivative of the plug in c, it tells us the slope at that point. <coughs> well, times x, that's x is just a variable in the equation of the line, right? x, you're going to have an x in any equation of a line that you write. So that x part, that's the same thing, OK? Uh, x minus x1, like the uh, initial x, the first x. C. OK? So we'll make these both uh, c and the same color. Also, um, this y part is going to be the same. Minus. Uh, this would be, yeah, f of c. Solve this equation for y. And y, y equals f prime of c times x minus c plus f of c. We just added f of c to both sides. You get y by itself. That's one thing we can do that equation with. When I mean, when I say that equation, I mean this. You can write the general form of the equation of the tangent line at C. Okay, this is the equation of tangent line at x equals C. Now, let's go back to this equation and, and look at what we're actually doing and, and what these quantities are equal to. If we take y minus f of c, what else could we call y minus f of c? It's already labeled up there. Dy. 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 Dy, which can approximate the change in y for the original function, equals f prime of c times, what's x minus c? Delta x. 
delta x, or since we want to make it fit with dy, we'll just call it dx, so it's the same thing. So we can call this, this is called the differential. So when we say differential, this is what the differential is. It's the change in y on the tangent line. That's the differential of y. So the differential of y. Or we could we could call it the approximation of delta y. What's delta y? Change a uh, change in y on the function that the tangent line came from, right? So we found two things. And I'm sorry that it's so general and abstract, but I want you to first see where this stuff is coming from, and then we'll grab it and we'll use it in specific problems. Okay. Um, so again, just to go back real quick, we have a function, and we have the line that's tangent to that function, and if we stay real close to the original c value, whatever that is, in the, in the example that we started with, that c value was three, and we stay real close to it, really close, within, maybe, what would that, this is a half, so this is maybe 3.01 and 2.99 or something like that, within those x values, within that, uh, maybe a delta x of 0 0.01, uh, we have, or 0.1, maybe uh, delta x of 0.1 plus or minus, we have good approximations of, of whatever the y value is of the function. They're pretty close. We're not exactly on, so we're also not in this L algebra. It's difficult. We have to be in this room. Okay. Um, so linear approximation, we just take, use the tangent line to approximate the y value of the function, or we can also use it to approximate the, the change in y, which is really uh, synonymous with the, the value of y. Um, see if there's anything we can uh, do real quick before we take a while. There's like a minute left. Two minutes. <laughs> 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 I'm just going to give you a few more problems from 3.9 and then we'll, of course, uh, work on it again. Come back.